The pro wrestling world is reacting to the shocking sex abuse scandal surrounding industry legend Vince McMahon. This episode is going to be tough to swallow. No, no pun intended. Last week, damaging report by the Wall Street Journal revealed a lawsuit that was filed against Vince McMahon alleging sex trafficking and a lot more. When I say a lot more, it's bad. Remember, innocent until proven guilty. That's how the justice system is supposed to work. But in today's society, the public's opinion seems to carry more weight. And according to the public's opinion, this 70 year old senior citizen as guilty as can be. In case you have been living underneath the rock, let me take a minute or two to explain to you who Vince McMahon is. If you already know who Vince McMahon is, go ahead and skip forward to the court case. Vince McMahon is a guy who turned professional wrestling into what we see now, a global empire. Now with that being said, there have been a lot of controversy surrounding Vince McMahon going all the way back from the time he bought this small indie wrestling company from his father. You see, back in the day, independent wrestling organization owned territories, and the rule was to respect each other's territory. Never cross the line of poaching other talent or trying to run another person's wrestling business out of business. It was a respect thing, an unspoken rule, a handshake type of deal amongst the wrestling community. When Vince McMahon took over, however, well, he had bigger visions for wrestling. And to turn that vision into reality, he broke all the unspoken rules. He poached wrestlers, he stole wrestlers, he invaded territories to the point that these smaller companies couldn't survive anymore. And they had two options, either sell to Vince McMahon or go down with the ship. Many opted to sell to Vince McMahon, and according to stories that I've read about Vince McMahon, he is notorious for making deals and not completely following through on the arrangements, specifically the arrangements of the payments. This tactic will unfortunately come to bite him in the ass later on down the line. We'll talk about it later. Vince McMahon turned wrestling into a global sports entertainment show, racking in billions through live events, subscription services, licensing deals, merch, movie studios, and the list goes on. Vince turned himself into a bona fide businessman, an unstoppable force, once again, no pun intended. This guy managed to transform ripped dudes with gorgeous bodies, squeeze them into speedos, slather them up with oil, and orchestrate a playful wrestling match in the ring for the audience that is predominantly male driven to enjoy and lust over. Ah, uh, what's going on with me? These last two episodes have been kind of gay. It has to be the water. Chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! Throughout the last four decades, Vince McMahon had several controversies that I'm honestly surprised he was able to overcome. From alleged murder cover-ups by his talent, to the big steroid controversy in the early 1990s, to Owen Hart falling to his death on a live pay-per-view and the show continued to move on, to having an infamous rating war against Ted Turner, to multiple wrestlers and former wrestlers from the WWE passing away due to drug and alcohol abuse. It was definitely part of the culture back then. The WWE even survived the controversy over Chris Benoit double murder suicide. This man survived it all, even the multiple attempts to try and compete against the NFL with XFL. Please, for the love of God, stop trying. Give it up. Let it go. It's a money pit. It's most likely going to go bankrupt. Bankruptcy! I'm clearly investing in TL. Nevertheless, it looked like McMahon was going to go down in history as a tycoon until... Pussy got in the way. A few weeks ago, Vince McMahon stepped down as WWE CEO following allegations of sexual misconduct. It turns out now there is a lot more to the story. An inquiry into his sexual assault allegations against Vince McMahon was conducted by the Wall Street Journal in 2022. He had reportedly paid $14.6 million to women as compensation for their silence regarding various affairs and misconduct. In that report, it also revealed accusations of a former female referee that alleged Vince McMahon forcefully raped her in his limo back in 1986. Now, McMahon denied any of these accusations and settled a lawsuit brought against him. Then in 2006 in Florida, a tanning salon employee claimed Vince McMahon came in and showed off unsolicited naked photos of himself and began groping her. Again, Vince McMahon denied all accusations and the prosecutors ultimately declined to file charges due to a lack of evidence. Did I mention that Vince McMahon has been married for like 100 years? And still married by the ways? Allegedly? Allegedly? There's a lot of allegedly's in this story today, okay? So hang with me. So with all that being said, I think we can all agree that Vince McMahon man has accomplished some impressive things in his lifetime while also being a piece of shit. But perception of Vince McMahon has always been negative since he himself has portrayed himself as a villain throughout the better part of his tenure in front of the camera. Even the occasional interviews where he's supposed to be himself, he sometimes can get triggered and turns into the character Mr. McMahon. Are you amazed by all the white trash that comes out yeah. to see these shows? We don't have any white trash. Yeah. With the exception of private company. Oh, come on, Vince. 
You've you're done not, the show, you're not right? Yourself in the mirror. What do you think of Howard? You're not, you're not white trash. So understanding Vince McMahon has become somewhat of a challenge. His real personality is somewhere in the middle. But I can tell you this: no one ever thought that Vince McMahon would ever ever sell WWE. The guy at the age of 70 was still living, breathing, eating, and clearly fucking WWE. Even his children were involved in the business, and then this happened. Let me say it another way. Go. This is the biggest thing Ari Emanuel and Vince McMahon have ever done. Yeah. Combining forces like this is, there's nothing like this. There's never been anything like this. We've been talking about this for a long time. What seemed like something special that came to an end, there was still some good news. At least Vince was still involved and he was still the CEO. And then the allegations came. He stepped down from his position as CEO. Anyways, it cleared him, of course, of any wrongdoing of using his business funds to pay for his personal extracurricular activities. See, that was the big story. Not that he paid off women and had them sign NDAs. It was whether or not he used business funds to pay off these expenses. The sleeping around with women, that wasn't a shock. That's as if like people really believe that Donald Trump has been this faithful husband. We all know he's been consistently unfaithful. Come on. Yeah, and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. I, I did try and fuck her. She was married. <laughs> huge news, Sarah. You no, know, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was marriages. And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took off and I moved in her like a bitch. Everyone kind of knew that Miss Man was laying down the pipe on various women and WWE divas throughout his entire 60 some years in the business. But I think we assumed that once he hit the age of 60 that he would just morph into his grandpa. But with all those steroids that this man allegedly is taking, NTRT, that 70 year old body and mind reversed itself back to a 20 year old pervert. So this episode is gonna get really disturbing and really dark. So if you are easily triggered, this is the time for you to exit stage left. Make sure you click that thumbs up, subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, and of course, make sure you click that bell button because that's what really counts. So I gave you guys a warning. I'm gonna give you two more seconds to exit just in case. Okay, we're done. So let's break the lawsuit down. According to the court filings, Janelle Grant, the plaintiff, stated that the two met in March of 2019 when Miss Grant was dealing with a profound grief and struggling financially after devoting years to around-the-clock caregiving to her parents that eventually passed away. On top of that, she was unemployed and her family and home was lost in her parents' bankruptcy. Apparently, the building manager took a liking to Janelle and made an introduction to Vince McMahon explaining to Vince of her hardship. They apparently became friends, giving her hopes of a new life with promises of yet to be determined role at WWE and showering her with attention and insurance along with gifts like a VIP experience to WrestleMania. Let me tell you, it, that is thousands and thousands of dollars to get a VIP experience at WrestleMania, I'm talking about like Super Bowl prices. What? Apparently shortly after that, McMahon began to demonstrate an increased lack of boundaries. He held several meetings in his condo, once appearing in his underwear, touched her, repeatedly asked her for hugs, and spent hours sharing intimate details about his personal life, including his separation from Linda McMahon, described as his, as his ex or long gone. Mr. McMahon eventually created an entry-level administrative coordinator position at WWE legal department, paying $75,000. Please name me a single intern that you know with zero experience coming in getting paid $75,000 a year. I'll wait. Exactly. He also expressed that they had to keep their relationship a secret. While she was in this position, McMahon was CEO of WWE at that time. At one point, McMahon pushed her into having physical relationship with him in return for a long-term employment with WWE. She obliged, of course, but mentioned that she was pressured into having an ongoing sexual relationship with him, and according to her lawsuit, McMahon recruited individuals to have sexual relationships with Ms. Grant and slash or with the two of them. Apparently, he also passed her on to John Laurinaitis, which was like the right-hand man to Vince McMahon. That's like his best friend. And he told her to visit him prior to the start of the workdays for sexual encounters. And he expected and directed Miss Grant to engage in sexual activity at the WWE headquarters, even during working hours. It sounds like she was moved to several other positions relatively quickly, making 200 k a year. Y'all, this is just the start of all of this. It gets much worse. But are you kind of seeing what I'm seeing here at this point? I gotta say, a person gets getting hired at 75k for an essentially an intern position to them making 200k in less than two years ladies and gentlemen this is a real life pretty woman except that you will quickly learn that the movie 
is a movie and what you're about to see right now is real life. But what we know from here is that she was hired early on in 2019 and, and by May of 2019 Miss Grant fell coerced into engaging in sexual activities and that McMahon had trapped her in an impossible situation as she feared adverse career and personal consequences and legal retaliation if she declined his advances. You're fired! McMahon stated apparently that this is what I have been waiting for as he performed oral sex on Miss Grant. Miss Grant asked that protection be used and McMahon responded that there was no need to worry because he was clean. As I'm covering this, you guys have probably seen the picture of Janelle Grant. In fact, I think this picture was used purposely, which looks like an outdated photo, but I cannot find any recent photos of her or anything in the past. It looks like the internet was completely wiped of her existence. Rightfully so, she's in the middle of a lawsuit. This is a high profile person. I'm sure she's getting harassed. But the picture that's being circulated around looks like a 20 year old. Well, let me explain something to y'all. This sounds like something that a 20 year old would fall into, where an older, powerful man is taking advantage of this young, naive 20 some year old. But let me stop you. This woman is in her 40s, 43 or 44, I believe. So let's put that in context right now. She's 44 some years old. She's down and out in her luck. She lives in a building, which Vince McMahon clearly lives in a penthouse. So I'm assuming that that building costs a lot of money to live in. And her parents clearly were wealthy. I also couldn't find any past history employment on this lady. So I'm wondering, what did she do before this job? And why is she acting like she's some 20 year old naive young girl who's being taken advantage of by an old powerful man? I know to R. Kelly, age is just another number. Yo, tell me with this but to me, I think a 40 year old should know better, especially a female. We all know that females, honestly, mature a lot quicker than us men. Look, nigga crying. So you're telling me a 44 year old is getting coerced into having a sexual relationship with a powerful rich man who is married, by the ways. Think about it. Fast forward a year into their affair, Grant stated that on May 9th of 2020, Mr. McMahon, Ms. McMahon, he, um, he shit on her head. He apparently shit on her head during a threesome and then commanded her to continue to pleasure his friend while he went to the bathroom to shower it off. And then he continued to sexually gratify himself. I mean, like, what the fuck? And instead of stopping it all, she still continues to pleasure this other guy while he washes himself up and then comes back and just continues. It, this is weird. I'm not sure if this was like a kink thing or if this was like an accident, like he accidentally sharded or... I, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I, this, this sounds crazy to me, right? Another incident, apparently in 2021, McMahon and Laurie would run trains on her in their offices and locker room while she begged to stop and they just continued to force themselves on her and would say things like no means yes and take it bitch you're gonna want to shower yourself in holy water after this episode i'm sorry Miss apparently also liked to share videos and pictures of her with the crew members and talent he also enjoyed using sex toys and he liked to name them after wrestlers i swear to god i'm not making this up the court document stated mcmahon named the sex toys so that the color of the toy matched the race of the wrestler. For example, a black dildo would be named after an African American wrestler and a white dildo would be named after a Caucasian wrestler. So somewhere in their kinky sex, he takes out toys and says, this is Brock Lesnar. This is Bobby Lashley. Aw, why am I doing this episode? He apparently had a kink with pretending other wrestlers were in the room watching them having sex. I don't think I could look at Mr. Man the same anymore, especially with, have you seen him recently? What the fuck is that on his lip? And what happened to his face? How the mighty have fallen. In January 2022, apparently McMahon told Grant that his wife found out about their relationship and to avoid the divorce or negative publicity or any sort of repercussions, McMahon ended their relationship, had her sign an NDA with a promise of payment and forced her to blow him one last time before she never saw him again. However, they remained in touch and he encouraged her to continue to have sexual relationships with men, including WWE superstar he was trying to keep within the WWE or bring them back. One specific wrestler wasn't mentioned directly in the court filings, but enough to detail was given to people that they have assessed that the individual that she's referring to in the court documents is Brock Lesnar and that she was instructed to send nudes as well as sexual videos and apparently they made plans to meet for sex but due to weather conditions Brock unfortunately couldn't make it out to see her. Now Brock Lesnar's story is pure speculation and the irony of all of this is that Brock Lesnar is also married to a former WWE diva Sable who had her own litigation lawsuits within the WWE in the early 
2000s. So how did we get here? Now, Janelle Grant came forward simply because Vince McMahon, in his typical fashion, didn't fulfill his obligation to pay the full amount they agreed upon. Like I said earlier, Vince McMahon tends to not pay people, but bro, if you're gonna be a pimp, you gotta keep your bitches in line and you gotta pay them. You know it's hard out here for a pimp. <laughs> All right, the books, that was just for a dramatic effect. Now, we covered the story of what was going on between Vince McMahon and Janelle Grant. But what we didn't get into yet is the evidence, and that's what we're going to do today. I want to make a few things clear. Now, we have established that this woman is over 40. We established that she's been with the company since 2019 all the way up until 2022. At that point, she was essentially let go. The only reason why she came forward publicly is because Vince McMahon decided not to continue to make the payments that he owed her. And what we also know is that this is a civil lawsuit, a civil case. So this is very different. And what's considered preponderance of evidence standard? Well, you must demonstrate that everything you're saying, your facts that you're presenting in the court documents are more than likely true. More than likely. I want to make this very clear because Vince McMahon will likely go down for this. No matter what, whether he's guilty or not, he's most likely going to go down for this. Which is really sad because... This is the first time in history where there is no McMahon running WWE. What I've also noticed is that people who have worked with him in the past, like Jim Cornette or Eric Bischoff, Lance Storm, and various other wrestlers, I've been watching their reaction to this whole civil lawsuit. And unfortunately, like I said, Vince McMahon is a very, very unlikable guy who burned a lot of bridges. And a lot of people do not have his back in this situation. That's why I come into play and that's why I'm playing devil's advocate here. Unfortunately, I do not agree with the public sentiment in this situation. Not because I don't believe this woman. Because, hey, listen, the whole Me Too movement train, it's long gone. I'm sorry, ladies. It has been burned and abused to the point where it's really hard to believe all women anymore. But here we are. And I'm just looking through the evidence that I saw myself. I have a hard time believing that this was not a consensual relationship. All right, so let's get into these disgusting text messages. Again, these sound like fantasies to me. It even says here that Miss Grant further details his fantasies of seeing her engage in sexual relationships. It sounds like they have built this relationship and this fantasy world where... They like to explore with other partners and get into freaky stuff. I'm just telling you, this is what it sounds like. All right. So one of those text messages is from Vince McMahon. He says this. I love it. That's you, Janelle. You just can't get enough, can you? In the future, it's going to be so bad that you'll demand to be effed twice a day and not just with blank in a three-way. Why not let others see the beautiful, voluptuous body and watch you shake uncontrollably when you... going to want more after all um, jesus christ that's one of the text messages i don't know what it is with rich people man they have this whole power trip it's really weird but here you go um is coming out of your of your holes and uh just this is disgusting i'll turn you over and i'll jack all over you I don't know how this stuff is sexy but what's what everyone always the obsession with black dicks man it's not always true it's not Sometimes people get the white part of their anatomy. This is the worst. Reading this, a lot of this does seem like it's consensual and that she's just trying to cover her ass and she wants the money that he owes her. Uh, now we got another text message. So this is the one where um, it was referring to the fact that he was showing her pictures around and um, her videos. So he sent her a message here saying, I just passed my phone around to a bunch of guys on a tech crew. They were screaming, oh my God, she's so fucking beautiful. Look at that ass. I like to get that. I pause and count out loud how many guys. 3.28 a.m. I honestly doubt that McMahon is 70 some years old. He'd be this stupid to really do this type of stuff at the workplace at that. Here's the one thing I did notice in all of these conversations, all these text messages. Um, there's no response of hers except this, um, last evidence. Oh, nope. That's just how many more text messages. Oh, we still got a few. Um, but here, for example, she does respond. Um, it says here on February 5th, 2021, McMahon sent Miss Grant to establish a schedule for when other men, including his physical therapist and Laurinaitis. So 
his physical therapist and Laurinaitis both were banging her as well, could have sex with Miss Grant, which Miss Grant attempted to rebuff. Exactly, baby, he's not the only one. Blank called me this afternoon begging to eat you and fuck you with his nice and hard dick. This is her response. Give me another week, baby, and I'll be ready. I'm feeling more like myself. It's not great, but it's getting better. Tell him soon. I already told him, baby. By the way, it's Johnny once Tuesday, but not this coming one and the occasional Saturday, but maybe I can shift it to Thursday nights. So this is where um, the the trafficking is coming into play and in which they're going to end up pushing for the fact that he's been passing around to multiple different places or different places, different people. Honestly, um, I mean, I could continue to go down with the rest of the text messages. Like I said, you can go look at it in the description below. Well, here are a few things that this man ended up buying her throughout these couple of years. 20000 towards surgery paid directly to the surgeon's office. Pearl Diamond Pave, I think that's how you say it. Uh, necklaces from Better Ridge in Greenwich, Connecticut. We're a lot of cashmere stuff, okay? He bought her a lot, a lot of cashmere stuff. Large bouquet of flowers delivered approximately every other week. So he was giving her flowers. Does this sound like someone who was not in a consensual relationship with a person who's just constantly just abusing them? Mr. McMahon bought her a 2022 BMW 430xi. How much does that car cost? Um, looks like it starts at like $47,000. So it's, it's not too expensive. Um, he gave her a $5,000 gift certificate at Lanfear Spa. Two private chef catered dinners in McMahon's condo. So they had dinner together. Yeah. And then on top of that, uh, the 200K or so that she was eventually making. Um, yeah, God knows what else was left off here. But yeah, so that's the evidence that's provided in this case. Before we wrap it up, I am curious. What are your thoughts on this whole situation? Do you believe that Vince McMahon did all of this atrocious things that this woman claims? Because we all know that Vince McMahon does have a history of being a womanizer and a piece of shit. So could he have done this? I'm really curious on what your thoughts are. So make sure you comment below. It also helps with the algorithm. When you comment, I will interact with you and make sure you click the bell button. Apparently the bell button is extremely important. So every time I drop a video, you will get notified and that way you click on it and you could be one of the first ones to watch my video. So until next time, check out one of these other videos. I'll just sit here and wait. Former WWE star and league CCO Triple H deflected when asked about the McMahon lawsuit at Royal Rumble Saturday. Well, I'm going to do exactly what you would expect me to do here. We just sold out the Royal Rumble, put 48,000 people in the Tropicana Field. Um, I choose to, to focus on the positive. And yes, there's a negative, um, but uh, I, I want to focus on that and just... All right, that's enough. Fuck off. <laughs>